I'll tell you what I know about this part of the world. Everything I know from reading Great Expectations. The story starts on Christmas Eve at a churchyard overgrown with nettles. In the churchyard are five little stone lozenges, each about a foot and a half long, the graves of five very young children. So that's where we walk to. Step straight off the train from London, walk out of the town, and onto the marshes. First, we weave our way between the warehouses. Alongside the wards, through the dodgy industrial estates, down the abandoned back alleys labelled optimistically hey? as a heritage trail. There's a dead end. What's the green sign there though then? I was thinking it'd be great to come along. It would be quite good to. I'm having. I'm getting a little flat down here. are practicing their anti-terrorism tactics. A band of free roaming horses block our path. We are heading towards an old ford. In the book, Dickens mentions an old battery that's nice to go to on Sundays after church. There's also a spit of sand off a point with a hazard light on it. You can see this from across the marshes at night. Our fort is derelict and fenced off. The spit of sand is a scrappy beach. There are meant to be sluice keepers houses out on the marshes. We don't see any of these. It's about an hour's walk from here back to the village where Pip, the main character, lives in a blacksmith's forge. We take much less than an hour to get from the fort back to the first village across the marshes but the churchyard there is not overgrown and does not have the five little stone lozenges. Sound. <laughs> and the first thing Madrid says is, hold your noise. What did you say? Hold your noise. Oh. Keep still, you little devil, or I'll cut your throat. Very violent book. Cried a terrible voice as a man started up from among the graves at the side of the church porch. Break it out. Yeah. Don't cut my throat, sir. I pointed to where our village lay on the flat inshore among the older trees and pollards a mile or more from the church. Well, that would be it, wouldn't it? Yeah. After lunch, we walked to the next village. Mm. And here we do find a graveyard, with not five, on here. but ten small stone lodges. Yeah. There are no nettles, and the view across the marsh is not elevated enough for us to see the low leaden line of the river <laughs> that Dickens sees. I think he was. <laughs> it's sort of right, it doesn't feel but it's not right. exactly right. I think he was taken with that. Made the layout, and then he, remember. yeah, or then he just transposed it. He just liked yeah. that image, and then he took it with him. Bloody fiction writers! In the book, really it's about a four-mile walk from the village to Miss Havisham's house in Rochester. For us, it's now a ten-mile walk back to Gravesend. On the way back, we do get a view across the marsh that accords with the view we should have had at the graveyard. We also find another churchyard, and that is overgrown with nettles and long grass. As I look across the marsh at one point to the ford, I see ships cruising past it in the background. 
And it's perfectly possible to imagine someone, an escaped convict perhaps, picking his way across the ditches and the canals towards the river. Which, which king? They've been in the civil war. No, no, before that. Before that. Mm. Well, in Russia, the castle, they um, had a big row against something. It was a giant. And the person, and he said, pig, he rendered some pigs down, took it under a tunnel, under the bus of the castle, set fire to it, that come down. Well, it used to be a Saxon place, and they built round or square towers, I forget the name, but they only, they replaced it, it's got three round and one square all. Yeah. It takes but hours to drive back to Gravesend, along the remains of the they Thames and Medway down Canal, down, really which Dickens as a boy would have seen being built. Perhaps it's the view from the safety of this civilised canal path that the author works from. He looks out across the marsh, remembers what he knows about the places out there, and then he starts to make things up. Nothing is quite where it should be. All the scenes are there, but somehow remixed. Three graveyards moulded into one. Two forts become one battery. Distances are stretched or shortened. Journey times artificially shrunk or spun out to suit events. And you know who lives in there now, don't you? Quite Castle. The pub, to the forge, to the churchyard, to the marshes, to the Thames with its hulks, its beacons and the gibbet. That's how it should be. But that's not how it is. He has played a trick on us. This is great expectations country. We just make it to the five past eight train.